When measuring the brightness of objects in the sky, astronomers use the magnitude scale. The basis of the scale we use today was invented by ancient Greek astronomers. They classified all stars into six magnitudes. The brightest stars were magnitude 1, the next brightest magnitude 2 and so on. The faintest stars visible to the naked eye had a magnitude of 6. The magnitude scale was unusual in that the lower the numeric value the brighter the object. The ancient Greeks gave all stars magnitudes which were whole numbers. However, over the centuries it became clear that fractional magnitudes were needed because for example not all stars assigned a magnitude of 1 have exactly the same brightness. In 1856, the British astronomer Norman Pogson standardized the magnitude scale to make an increase in magnitude of 5 a decrease in brightness by a factor of 100 and vice versa. So for example, a star of magnitude 6 is 100 times fainter than one of magnitude 1. As the science of measuring the brightness of objects developed, it became clear that there was more than a hundredfold variation between the brightest and the faintest stars. So, the magnitude scale had to be extended so that the brightest stars had a magnitude of less than 1. The brightest star in the sky, Sirius, has a magnitude of minus 1.46. Stars too faint to be seen with the naked eye have a magnitude value greater than 6. Any scale must have at least one reference point. For example, on the centigrade scale 0 degrees is the freezing point of water and 100 degrees its boiling point. On Pogson's scale the bright star Vega in the constellation Lyra was given a magnitude of 0 and an increase in magnitude value of 1 a decrease in brightness of the fifth root of 100 which is roughly equal to 2.512. And here is a summary of Pogson's scale. The modern magnitude scale astronomers use today is based on Pogson's original scale and I'll discuss that next. But first we have to go through some of the key definitions. Sources of electromagnetic radiation emit radiation over a wide range of wavelengths. The power emitted is measured in watts. The intensity of electromagnetic radiation is the power falling on a unit area and is measured in watts per square meter. The intensity of radiation falls with the distance from the source due to the well-known inverse square law. The human eye has different sensitivity to visible light of different wavelengths. It is more sensitive to light in the middle of the spectrum at green wavelengths and less sensitive to light of shorter wavelengths at the blue and violet end of the spectrum and to light of longer wavelength at the red end. The lumen is a measure of the perceived power of visible light emitted by a source. The proper name for this is the luminous flux, the power at different wavelengths is weighted according to a standard model which approximates the human eye's sensitivity. Illuminance is the luminous flux per unit area and is measured in lumens per square meter. One lumen per square meter is also known as a lux. For example, if we had a source with a power of 10 watts which emitted all its radiation at a wavelength of 555 nanometers, then its luminous flux would be 6830 lumens. If we had a 10 watt source which emitted all its radiation at a wavelength of 650 nanometers, which lies in the red light region of the spectrum, then its luminous flux would be 800 lumens. To the human eye, which is less sensitive to red light it would appear fainter, even though the power emitted is the same. If we have a 10 watt source which emitted all its radiation at a wavelength of 800 nanometers, which lies in the near infrared, then its luminous flux is zero. A detector like the human eye which is not sensitive to infrared would not detect anything. Although the term brightness is widely used even in scientific literature, it can be ambiguous. In precise scientific terms, the modern magnitude scale is a measure of illuminance. Rather than being based upon Vega which is a slightly variable star, the zero point has an illuminance of 2.12 times 10 to the minus 6 lux. And here's a summary of the modern magnitude scale, 
as well as stars, it also applies to planets, asteroids, comets, and even artificial satellites. And here's the magnitudes of some objects on the modern scale. As I have said previously the magnitude scale is a measure of illuminance the following formula is used to convert from a magnitude to the illuminance value in lumens per square meter or lux. where EV is the illuminance and MV is the magnitude. The illuminance of the sun is 105,680 lux, a full supermoon is 0.308 lux. And the brightest star Sirius 8.17 times 10 to the power of minus 6 lux which is 13 billion times less than the sun. For comparison the illuminance 2 meters away from a 1500 lumen household light bulb is 29.8 lux, assuming its light is spread out equally in all directions. Ancient astronomers believed that all the stars were at the same distance from us. In the 19th and early 20th century it became clear, as the distances to more and more stars were measured, there was a large variation. To provide a measure of real brightness, absolute magnitude was introduced. The absolute magnitude is the magnitude a star would have if it were placed 10 parsecs 32.6 light years away from us. The magnitude we observe on Earth became known as the apparent magnitude. For example, the Sun which has an apparent magnitude of minus 26.74 has an absolute magnitude of only 4.83. It is only very bright because it is close to us and, if it were 10 parsecs away, it would be an insignificant star. Absolute magnitude applies not just to stars but to all astronomical objects which emit their own light. For example, hot clouds of glowing gas, entire galaxies, and distant objects such as quasars. As we've said before the absolute magnitude is the magnitude an object would have at a distance of 10 parsecs. For large extended objects such as the Andromeda Galaxy which is 50,000 parsecs in diameter being at a distance of 10 parsecs does not really make any sense. So, the absolute magnitude is calculated assuming all the light is concentrated at one point. Objects which don't emit their own light and shine by reflected light from the sun such as planets, asteroids, comets, and indeed artificial satellites would be completely invisible at a distance of 10 parsecs. The concept of absolute magnitude doesn't apply in the same way. Their brightness depends on the following. The object's surface area, the distance from the observer, the distance from the sun, the fraction of the light hitting it which is reflected back rather than being absorbed, its albedo, the fraction of the object which is illuminated, its phase. The equivalent of absolute magnitude for objects which shine by reflected light is the H value. This is the apparent magnitude the object would have if, it were one astronomical unit from the observer, where one astronomical unit is the mean distance between the Earth and the Sun approximately 150 million kilometers. It were also one astronomical unit from the sun and, it were 100% illuminated that means it's in its full phase. However, the only way it would be possible to satisfy all three conditions would be for the observer to be located on the surface of the sun A. At location such as B, which is also 1 AU from the object, it would have less than 100% phase.
And here's the H values of some solar system objects. Jupiter and Saturn have the brightest H values because they are the largest planets. Just to complicate things, sometimes the term absolute magnitude is used for solar system objects. In which case it actually means the H value. Personally, I find this different use of the term confusing. Up until now, I have only considered magnitudes based upon what astronomers call the V-band. This approximates to how the human eye has different sensitivity to light at different wavelengths. These are more precisely called visible magnitudes or V magnitudes. Although, the term magnitude, without any further qualification is always assumed to be an apparent magnitude in the V-band. Stars which are much hotter than the sun radiate most of their energy at shorter wavelengths primarily in the ultraviolet. Their visible light is emitted mainly at the violet and blue range of the spectrum. Stars which are much cooler than the sun radiate most of their energy at longer wavelengths primarily in the infrared. Their visible light is emitted mainly at the red end of the spectrum. For this reason, astronomers also use magnitudes measured at other wavelengths. Some examples are, blue or B, magnitudes which are based upon light received over a range of wavelengths in the blue region of the spectrum centered on 440 nanometers, red or R magnitudes which based upon light received over a range of wavelengths in the red region of the spectrum centered on 650 nanometers. Stars emit most of their energy in the visible light, infrared and ultraviolet regions of the spectrum, with energy emitted at other wavelengths making a much smaller contribution. However, some objects emit large amounts of energy at other wavelengths. For example, large black holes are surrounded by disks of matter heated to such high temperatures, millions of degrees Celsius, that they emit large amounts of their energy as X-rays. The luminosity is the power emitted by an object such as a star, galaxy, or a quasar summed up over the entire electromagnetic spectrum. The standard unit of power is the watt. However, when expressed in watts the power emitted by stars are very large numbers. Therefore, luminosities are usually expressed on a scale where the luminosity of the sun is given the value of 1. And here are the luminosities of some objects.